My father uh, taught me to never complain, and he didn't ever have to tell me that. He just did it by the way that he lived. Um, my father's still living. He's 90 years old. He's full-time in a wheelchair because he has post-polio syndrome, and as a result, uh, he just can't really move very much at all. Um, and yet, he's always got a smile on his face, and, uh, and I appreciate his demeanor. And, and uh, I think what stood out most for me when I was a boy was when my father um, came home from work one day and his glasses were broken, his face was bloodied, and my mother thought that someone had beat him up. And, and uh, my father worked in downtown LA. And he says, you know, I was just, I was walking across the street and you know, my good leg hit a pothole and, and my bum leg is what he called his bad leg from polio. Um, just couldn't support my weight and I knew I was going down and I just couldn't get my arms up fast enough and I just hit the pavement face first. And, People had to get out of their cars and drag me across the street to brush me off and, and uh, get me on my way. And, and then he chuckled, he laughed, and he said, i got to be more careful next time. And as a 10-year-old boy, that um, really had an impression on me. Because I thought, why didn't he complain? You know, why doesn't he curse life and, and, and the cars that have been dealt his way lately? Because he just really struggled physically to move around sometimes, and yet uh, that was his attitude. And so I think the, the motto in our family was we just, you don't quit. You know, my father never quit. My father expected us to finish what we started. Um, I remember one time when one of my brothers or sisters was calling home from college and I could hear my dad on the phone going, uh-huh, yeah, I see, okay, I know you feel bad, uh-huh, yeah, I know. And then after a long pause he says, well, you know what the family motto is, so just do the best you can. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Click. <laughs> And, um, and I think he was an example to all of us from that standpoint. Well, I think my coach, Makoto Sakamoto, had a tremendous influence on me, and he still does. Um, he, uh, he was Olympian himself, and he never really had to tell me to work hard or to be disciplined because he would just fill my mind with stories of the Olympic Games or the World Championships or great experiences that he had. And it made me hungry to have those similar experiences. And so just through his storytelling, uh, he made uh, becoming an Olympian a romantic quest for me. I wanted to, I wanted to, to have those experiences. And um, he was just brilliant at, uh, at motivating me that way. I think that uh, if, if I were to, to, to look at my Olympic medals, they're just a symbol of, of, of the process, uh, the symbol of, of, of just the daily efforts to try to become better at something. That, that, that's really what it means to me. It really isn't about that day on the floor at the Olympic Games when I was able to win the medal. Um, it really, I think the medals just tell a story of a boy that fell in love with the sport when he was 11 years old and never looked back and, and tried not to compromise, you know, tried to, to, to be true to, to my training and, uh, and, uh, and make sure that I never left the gym until I knew I'd done everything I could to be a better athlete that day. I love Doctrine and Covenants 58 that we should be anxiously engaged in the good cause. Um, and uh, so I try to, try to be anxiously engaged and enjoy doing good. It's not easy sometimes when you get busy, but I think that's important for me to learn. Oh, I don't know if you could say children are an accomplishment. My greatest joy in life comes from, from seeing my children find joy, and, and, and my wife, and my family. That's, that's my greatest joy in life, is to see them filled with joy. Really, I don't know if life is really about accomplishing things. Um, it's about relationships, I think. You know, I, I, I grew up in the church. My roots go back to, um, to Joseph Smith, to the prophet Joseph. My great-great-grandfather, Solomon Chamberlain, was baptized by the prophet. Um, and uh, he crossed the plains, suffered much, and, uh, and I have a pioneer heritage.
heritage and a pioneer legacy. And I honor, I honor my ancestors for the sacrifices that they made. But uh, there also has to come a time when I have to ask myself, you know, what do I believe? I'll tell you what, it's interesting. I, I've always been a faithful member of the church. I mean, I, I went to seminary, and even with all my gymnastics training, and, and uh, was always, have always been active. Uh, when I was a gymnast at UCLA, and I chose to go there to be with my coach, who I mentioned earlier. When I was there, I met uh, a beautiful young girl on the gymnastics team. I figured that's the best place to meet um, short-statured girls, is in the gymnastics room. And so I, uh, there was a very cute one on the other side, and I, and, uh, and I started dating her. Uh, she was, and, and her name was Donna Harris, and, uh, and she took an interest in the church, and I was able to, to baptize her. But to see her go through that conversion process um, really, I think, was a tremendous experience for me personally to kind of experience that process really in a way for myself as well um, to, to really strengthen my testimony um, and you know from there uh, she joined the church and we were married in the temple um, about a year, year and a half later and, and, uh, and she's an incredible faithful um, mother of our five children and uh, I just can't imagine life any other way. I can't imagine life without the gospel. What I cherish most are the relationships I have with my wife and children, with my family, with my friends. That's what makes life full and enriching. Um, and, and in the process of doing that, of course, there are goals that we establish, whether it's a physical goal in a sport or a, a goal in our career, um, a, a goal in, in our volunteer service, whatever it is that we do. Um, I, I think that, uh, that, that those are all important. Uh, in, in, and, and, and having those goals are, are, are meaningful. I, I, I like having objectives that are time sensitive. You know, I, I enjoy even at my old age training for a, you know, a 10K race or a mountain bike race or something like that. I like having something that has a deadline to it that, that, that kind of um, maybe forces me to, uh, to stick with a schedule. And, and so I, I do like that part about life. I learned that from being an athlete, from being a gymnast. Um, you know, I had a very set schedule with my coach that I knew that when I walked in the gym every day that I wasn't going to leave the gym until I accomplished this or this or this or this. And, and I knew that I had weeks that were mapped out. I had months that were mapped out. And I tried to live by that. Um, I'm not as good as doing that in everything, and I don't think you can structure your life in everything. I don't think that's appropriate either. Um, but Because uh, I think you have to also be uh, flexible and available to assist and to do things on a moment's notice and to drop everything as well. But I think if you have some structure to your life that when the time comes to put out a fire or to act on something, um, you can get right back to do the things that you were doing if you've got, a, if you've got some structure to it as well.